Oh, Pande Vida. This is possibly new to some of you, so I thought we'd go over it just a little bit here. The refrain has a few words of Spanish in it. Um, I will read them. You can repeat them back to me. Pan de vida, cuerpo del Señor. Pan de vida, cuerpo del Señor. And then down a couple lines. Poder es servir porque Dios es amor. Poder es servir porque Dios es amor. Uh, the second verse, you have a Spanish or English option. So we'll be, when we sing it later in the service, we'll sing three verses, and um, both in the hymnal and projected on the slides will be both the English and the Spanish for verse two. Um, right now, let's just sing through the refrain and verse one, and then the refrain again, just to get a little bit comfortable with the melody. Number 44, uh, The Love of God, one of our favorite songs that I wanted to share with you this morning. We'll sing verses, um, verses 1 and 3 right now.
And then number 28 in the same book. We worship God the rock. We worship God the rock, then the river, and then the rock and river, all together one. Now Phyllis will help us prepare for worship with her prelude.
Ours is a God who does wonders. Welcome to worship at College Mennonite Church. Especially want to welcome those of you who are here this weekend for Goshen College Homecoming. It's a special weekend on this campus. Uh, we look forward to it here and uh, trust that you have been looking forward to it and we hope that you've had a great time here. I invite you to turn with me in the call to worship and we will read responsively. Seek God, and you will live. Busca a Dios y vivirás. Seek the one who makes the seven stars and Orion, who turns the shadow of death into morning and makes the day dark with night, who calls the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the face of the earth. Dios es su nombre. Please stand and join your voices in singing number 12, Come Let Us All Unite to Sing, as Anne Marie leads us. I invite you to join me in prayer for our prayers of the people. And when I say, we pray to you, O Lord, I invite you to respond with a refrain, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church of God in all places, that it be filled with truth and love and found without fault at the day of your coming that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel 
to the ends of the earth, including those serving on behalf of this congregation. For the Spanish language service here at College Mennonite next week, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance grow among nations and peoples, that those in positions of public trust serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, for the reduction of violence and the increase of righteousness, for the ministry of Goshen College, for those throughout the world that have called this place home, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord for all who live and work in this community, for a blessing on all human labor, that your gifts of creation are used to free the world from poverty, famine, and disaster. For those working to bring reconciliation in situations of strife. For those whose, whose livelihoods involve working for the health and well-being of our bodies. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord hear. For the poor, the persecuted, and all who grieve and suffer for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, for immigrants, for the sick, for the grieving, for Liz Jacobs, for Libby Reber, for Marie Clements, for Jeanette Yoder, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord hear. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, and with gratitude for your steadfast love and mercy, we commit ourselves and all our life to Christ. Grant that all who have been reborn in the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in our lives what we profess by faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. This time, I would like to invite the children to come forward for the children's time. And it's kind of, looks kind of different up here, looks kind of intriguing. Maybe if you're not children, you want to come up too so you can get a good seat. Uh, so come forward as we sing Over My Head. We'll sing the first two verses of this, and I'd like to invite the woman to sing the solo part on the first verse, and on the second part, the men can sing the solo part, as you feel led. If you'd rather not, that's fine too.
We are going to make bread. Caleb, what should we put in first, do you think? Yeah, we got the yeast going, didn't we? So there's some yeast in this water with, along with some honey, because the honey, the sugar of the honey kind of helps that yeast get kick-started. Well, if you want to stand so you can see a little bit better, you can do that. Yeah. Can you go ahead and pour the, the flour in so we can get the flour and the salt mixed up? And then, yeah, let's put that yeast in in a little bit here. So he's going to tap all that flour in. And now let's do some salt. A little bit of salt makes the food taste good. You want to mix it up? Yeah. Okay, we're getting that flour and that salt all mixed together. And now, what do you think we should sing while you pour the yeast in? Yeast makes the whole dough rise. A little bit of yeast makes the whole dough rise. You do your part and I'll do mine. A little bit of yeast makes the whole dough rise. A little bit of salt makes the food taste good. A little bit of salt makes the food taste good, just the way I knew it would. A little bit of salt makes the food taste good. With a little bit of heat, we can make some bread. A little bit of heat, we can make some bread. Pass it around, that's what I said. A little bit of heat, we can make some bread. All right. You want to knead that, Caleb? You think you can bring it together? All right, and he promises he has very clean hands. Okay, Matthew, can you read some scripture for us here? It's okay, just go ahead and it'll, it'll catch you. Until the yeast had worked its way through all the dough. Let's have him read that again. We'll hear it a little bit better and think about what he's reading. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through all the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast. It gets mixed with flour and it works its way in there until the whole dough rises and turns into bread. Yeah. I wonder what in the world Jesus meant by that. Think about that a little bit today. If the yeast is... Yeah, we are really making bread. Caleb is getting it all kneaded in. Caleb's a pretty good baker, and he's done this before. So he's doing a pretty impressive job with this kneading. Have you made bread before? With your grandma. Yeah. There's nothing quite like homemade bread. And you know what's going to happen? During the whole worship service, it's going to sit up here, and it's going to rise because the yeast makes the whole dough rise. It'll make it change and get bigger and bigger and bigger until instead of just a whole bunch of flour that we wouldn't really want to eat, it becomes something that we can pop in the oven and that will bake while you're in Sunday school and that you'll get to taste at the end of Sunday school. Yep. So keep thinking if a little bit of yeast makes the dough rise, and we, the kingdom of God, are kind of like yeast in the world. That's a lot to think about. It's a lot to make sense of. We actually get to taste it. Yeah, because when that yeast does its work in the bread, then something kind of miraculous happens, doesn't it? Becomes something different, transforms that flower. Let's sing the song one more time while Caleb's almost done with this. Let's sing it one more time. A little bit of yeast makes the whole dough rise. 
A little bit of yeast makes the whole dough rise. You do your part and I'll do mine. A little bit of yeast makes the whole dough rise. A little bit of salt makes the food taste good. A little bit of salt makes the food taste good. Just the way I knew it would. A little bit of salt makes the food taste good. One more thing we need is heat. With a little bit of heat, we can make some bread. A little bit of heat, we can make some bread. Pass it around, that's what I said. With a little bit of heat, we can make some bread. Read that passage for us one last time, Matthew. It comes from the book of Matthew, believe it or not, and Matthew's going to read it. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through all the dough. All right. You see this dough? Because Caleb kneaded it so well, it's become elastic-y. Yeah, he activated the gluten. And now, whoops, sorry. <laughs> we just flung some dough at you there, buddy. And we're going to stick it in here. And now you know what we have to do? Bake it. We're going to cover it. But while it's covered, it's still going to be kind of picking up all the stuff that's in the air in here. So it's like it's getting a little bit of us while it rises. And then after worship, we'll pop it in the oven. So during communion, when you come up to get your, your pretzel and blessing, you can take a peek at this too, okay? But don't touch it because then... It, that might release the air that's building up in it, and it'll go, okay? Yes, at the end of Sunday school, you can eat it. That's right. All right, thank you, helpers. You may get your worship bags and go back to your seats. While the children are going back to their seats, let's sing number 85 in the green, sing the journey. Pan de vida, bread of life, body of our Lord. Uh, we'll be singing three verses. The second verse you can sing either Spanish or English as you choose.
Our scripture this morning is found, uh, first of all, in, from ex- in Exodus 2, running into uh, chapter 3. I'm going to start reading uh, with verse 15. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh. He settled in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. The priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came to draw water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. But some shepherds came and drove them away. Moses got up and came to their defense and watered their flock. When they returned to their father, Ruel, he said, How is it that you have come back so soon today? They said, an Egyptian helped us against the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, where is he? Where did you leave the man? Invite him to break bread. Moses agreed to stay with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah in marriage. She bore a son, and he named him Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien residing in a foreign land. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. The word of the Lord. Our preacher this morning is uh, Dr. Rebecca J. Stolzfus, uh, Becky to most of us, the president of Goshen College. Um, Please pray with me. Gracious God, we thank you for the gifts that you give to the church, the gifts for service and leadership. And I thank you for the gifts that you have given to Becky for this season in the history of Goshen College. I thank you for your call on her life and your call on all of us, on each one of us, as we care and love Goshen College, as it grows in its service of you and in its mission to make justice in the field of education. I ask your blessing upon Becky. In these minutes, I ask that you would guide her thoughts and her words, and I ask that you open our hearts to hear what you have to say through her. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. (laughs) It is so very good to be with you all this weekend, Goshen College's homecoming weekend. So um, if you don't regularly um, worship here, welcome home to Goshen College, welcome home to College Mennonite Church. We are always here for you. And thank you um, for giving me this opportunity to speak with you on this Communion Sunday. So we continue our series on wonder. 
For thousands of years, great teachers have known that wonder is the beginning of wisdom. <clears throat> we don't need the Greek philosopher Socrates to tell us this. Just watch a child. See him explore. Behold her face and eyes as she discovers something new. <clears throat> Listen to their exclamations and laughter. And we saw that this morning with the simple um, creation of bread dough. Wonder is associated with joy because the world and our human experience is so magnificent, so astonishing, and we human beings are designed for learning. The urge to learn and our delight in learning is utterly compelling in early childhood. But it is with us in every stage of life. And wonder is the foundation of learning. Wonder is found at the edges of our knowledge. We know a lot, and we don't know a lot more. It's like this. Here I am. So imagine a circle that I make around me that represents what I know. It's pretty small. Here I am in my circle of what I know. And beyond that is this whole enormous sanctuary. And beyond that is the world and the universe. When I was small and would come home from school, my father would sometimes ask me, are you driving back the boundaries of your ignorance? And not in a judgmental way, but in an enthusiastic way. Go, daughter. Children are made for this. They explore with all of their senses, touching and tasting and looking and listening, asking why. But why? Testing things. What will happen if I do this? They are eager to push on the boundaries of their knowledge. As we grow up, we adults begin to get comfortable in our circle of knowing. We begin to feel that perhaps we know enough. Life in our little circle gives us control, a degree of certainty. We like answers. We like to know it all. Neil Burton is a philosopher and physician, and he says, sadly, many people do not open themselves to wonder for fear that it might distract them, overwhelm their resources, or upset their equilibrium. After all, wonder is wounding. To wonder is also to wander, to stray from society and its norms and constructs, to be alone, to be free, which is, of course, deeply subversive, and why even organized religions need to tread a fine line with wonder. To rationalize the fear of it, wonder is dismissed as a childish and self-indulgent emotion that is to be grown out of, rather than encouraged or cultivated. So I thank our leadership team for giving us a five-week series on wonder, that we are not afraid of wonder here at College Mennonite Church. But let's admit that we like certainty. We like to know it all, especially in the West and especially in these times. But wonder is not found in what we know. It is found at the edges of our knowing with one foot in and one foot out. We can recognize the feeling of wonder in our bodies, in the widening of our eyes, the change in our breath, a softening or swelling of our heart. Wonder is a whole body experience felt in the mind, in the senses, in our hearts. Wonder is awesome. 
And we don't find it here when we keep our gaze here in the center of our knowing. So how do we lift up our heads and find windows to wonder? So here are four suggestions. The story of Moses and the burning bush is certainly a story of wonder, and it is the one that leapt to my mind as I um, thought about speaking to you this morning. But I want to focus not so much on the burning bush moment, but on the context in which this happened. Moses, a Hebrew slave baby, was adopted by the Pharaoh's daughter and grew up in extreme privilege. As a young man, he realized the injustice and oppression of his Hebrew people. And one day, witnessing a Hebrew slave being beaten by an Egyptian overlord, Moses became enraged and killed the Egyptian. But he was found out, and so he fled Egypt and the Pharaoh's household to a faraway place called Midian. There he befriended a family and was taken in by the father who gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. <clears throat> Moses named their first baby boy Gershom, saying, I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. And one wonders whether he's speaking of his foreignness in the Pharaoh's household or his foreignness in Midian. He was really a foreigner his entire life. So here is the first window, being a foreigner in a foreign land. To wonder is also to wander, to stray from society and its norms and constructs, to be alone, to be free. We can romanticize foreign travel, but this morning, let's not. Let's remember that Moses was fleeing for his life. Yes, he was wandering. He had strayed from society and its norms. <laughs> but this was not a vacation. And we experience estrangement in many ways, and many times without travel. So I wonder, where in your life are you wandering? When do you feel alone? Does any part of your life right now feel strange and foreign to you? Probably so. And while this is surely uncomfortable, it is also a window to wonder. Go there. Pay attention. A second window to wonder is also familiar to us, and that is the window of the natural world. Notice that we are in a series on wonder in the midst of a whole year-long theme of creation care. When we speak of creation care, it can sometimes imply that we are caring for creation. But creation cares for us. Creation takes care of us in many ways, but one way is that it continually offers us abundant and accessible windows to wonder. Hear this poem by E.E. E. Cummings. I thank you, God, for most this amazing day, for the leaping, greenly spirits of trees and a blue, true dream of sky for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. I who have died am alive again today, and this is the sun's birthday. This is the birth day of life and of love and wings 
and of the gay, great, happening, illimitably earth, how should tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing any, lifted from the know of all nothing, human merely being, doubt, unimaginable you? Now the ears of my ears awake, and now the eyes of my eyes are opened. A third window to wonder is each other. Each other. Again, let us not romanticize this. We can be kind, even magnificent, but we can also be annoying, even infuriating to one another. The key to wonder in human relationships is, I believe, curiosity and the willingness to stay present. This does not come naturally. It is much easier when someone is acting like an alien or in ways that alienate us to stay inside our comfortable circle of knowing. We like things our way. We like to be right. But we can learn a different way we can stay present and practice being curious. And listen, I'm not just talking about people who differ politically or culturally, although this also applies to them. I am talking about my husband, <laughs> who's a pretty nice guy. Maybe you know him. I'm talking about my friends. There is a world of wonder to be discovered in each other. Dag Hammarskjöld, the former Secretary General of the United Nations and also a great spiritual man, wrote, people who are worried about the world's problems and those who are busy with those problems very easily forget the smaller issues. If you are not willing to be good in the smaller circles of your family and friends, you can't do anything for humanity as such. Let us be open to the worlds of wonder in each other. The fourth window to wonder is Christ. We know Christ, and yet Christ is beyond our knowing. In the beginning was the Word, long, long, long ago. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all humankind. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And he said, abide in me as I abide in you. And on this communion Sunday, Christ sets a holy feast for us in which Christ's body becomes our body as we eat the bread and drink the cup, and through which we become the body of Christ. Step out of your knowing and reach across the millennia in the wonder of this bread, this cup. Let us taste and touch Jesus this morning, for the place that we are standing is holy ground.
In your blue hymnal, please turn to number 517, Open My Eyes That I May See. 517. I invite you to turn into your bulletins and we will read our liturgy preparing for the table. Luis is going to read in Spanish first, so where you see the leader part, Luis is going to read that first in Spanish and then I'll read it in English and this should uh, appear on the screens as well. La paz del Señor esté con ustedes. The peace of the Lord be with you always. ¿Qué traemos a la mesa del Señor? What do we bring to Christ's table? Aquí, Cristo nos alimenta en abundancia. At this table, Christ feeds us out of abundance. ¿Qué traemos a la mesa del Señor? What do we bring to Christ's table? We bring the fruit of the vine, fresh from many graves, from a broken world which cries for healing. 
En su mesa compartimos la copa de la esperanza y el gozo de la salvación. At this table we share the cup of hope and the joy of salvation. ¿Qué traemos a la mesa del Señor? What do we bring to Christ's table? We bring our gifts and offerings, returning to God the first fruits of our labors. En su mesa ofrecemos corazones confiados en el amor de Dios. At this table we offer willing hearts Secure in God's love. Thanks be to God. I invite you to bring your offerings forward at this time and place them in the baskets, or you can place them in the uh, offering plates that the ushers will be uh, will be bringing through. Uh, it's also our birthday offering this first Sunday in October. So if you have an uh, October uh, birthday, come forward with your birthday offering. Uh, and or a blessing, uh, a birthday blessing. Please remain standing as we continue our, our liturgy. El Señor les acompañe. The Lord be with you. 
Levanten sus corazones. Lift up your hearts. Demos gracias al Señor nuestro Dios. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Señor, en todo tiempo es bueno alabarte y darte gracias. Por tu gran bondad creaste y diste vida a todas las cosas. Por eso, unimos nuestras voces con los santos y todos los seres celestiales para alabar tu glorioso nombre. It is indeed right and always right to give you thanks and praise, Lord God. In your goodness you created all things and gave them life. Therefore we join our voices with the saints, past, present, and to come, and all the company of heaven to praise your glorious name. We'll sing the first verse of number 75 in the blue hymnal. Please join us in prayer. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image. You made a covenant with us to be our God. When we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us Jesus, your crowning gift. Despojándose de sí mismo, dando plenitud de gozo, Jesús alimentó al hambriento, sanó al enfermo, comió con el menospreciado y abandonado y lavó los, los pies de sus discípulos. Nos dio la Santa Cena como promesa de su perdurable presencia a través de su sufrimiento, muerte y resurrección. Dio nacimiento a la Iglesia. Nos libró de la muerte y el pecado e hizo un pacto por medio del agua y del Espíritu Santo. Jesucristo, En memoria de tus maravillas y en adoración, nos ofrecemos como sacrificio vivo. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at your heavenly banquet. In Jesus' name, we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would the servers please come forward at this time? La noche antes de su muerte, Jesús tomó el pan, y habiendo dado gracias, lo partió, y lo dio a sus discípulos, y dijo, Tomen y coman. Este es mi cuerpo que por vosotros es dado. Haced esto en memoria de mí. The night before he died, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Después que hubo cenado, tomó la copa, y después de haber dado gracias, les dio la copa y les dijo, Todos ustedes tomen de esta copa, esta es mi sangre del nuevo pacto de amor, que por vosotros y muchos es derramada, para el perdón de pecados. Haced esto en memoria de mí. After supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, Jesus gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant of love, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Por tanto, Dios Todopoderoso, recordamos la vida, la muerte y la resurrección de tu Hijo. Celebramos tu maravillosa gracia y proclamamos el misterio de la fe. Therefore, Almighty God, in this remembrance of the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, we now, we now celebrate the wonder of your grace. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amigos, amigas, esta es la celebración de gozo para el pueblo de Dios. Vendrán del este y del oeste, del norte y del sur, y se sentarán a la mesa en el reino de Dios. Cuando el Señor resucitó y estaba a la mesa con sus discípulos, tomó el pan y lo partió, y les dio de comer. Sus ojos fueron abiertos y lo reconocieron. Esta es la mesa del Señor. Vengan a la celebración de nuestro Salvador. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west, and from north and south, and sit at table in the kingdom of God. When our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took the bread and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior bids us to share the feast. He has prepared, come. All who are able are invited to come forward to the circle to take communion as the ushers direct from back to front. If you are not able to take communion but would like to, there will, there will be servers uh, going around the congregation and uh, they will be looking for you. As you come, I invite you to put your hands out to receive the bread, which will be given to you by the servers, and then take the bread and dip it in the cup and partake. Children are invited to come forward to the circle for a blessing. This is the Lord's table, come.
Please join me in prayer. Bountiful God, you have nourished us with our Savior Christ, who has come to us in this holy banquet. Unite us now in faith, mercy, and justice. 
Inspire us to love the world as Christ does. Encourage us with the hope of everlasting life. All this we ask, Holy God, through Jesus Christ, your incarnate word, and your life-giving spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. For our final hymn, number 472 in the Blue Hymnal, please stand if you are able. We will sing verses 1 and 4, and you're welcome to sing either Spanish or English as you choose. Please receive uh, this benediction, and following the benediction, I encourage you to extend a word of welcome and greeting to those who are around you. This benediction is from Jude, verses 24 and 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory with rejoicing, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time, and now, and forever. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>